Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? So, something a little different today. We are in between the FMS Northern Star and Poseidon Energy at this little lighthouse down here, which was a location suggested to me by one of my viewers, Alice Trans Queen, and it looks rather cool. So, I've thrown down a workbench. It's in the bottom of the lighthouse there, and there's a few posts out that you can see there for uh, the limit of the build area. It's actually quite big. I haven't marked it out around the other side because it's right out into the ocean and, yeah, generally a nightmare to build on, but... Here we go. So it's quite... This causeway working out to it. It's quite cool. I definitely wanted to uh, turn that into a feature, so... We'll start a bridge here. I ended up sort of stopping halfway through and finishing it off later on just because uh, I wasn't quite sure as to where I uh, wanted it to go and how it was going to interact with the rest of the build, so... We'll uh, get it started at least now and finish it off in a bit. Bit of group select going on because it doesn't want to sit particularly closely to the uh, edge of this existing piece. However, it did behave quite well when I did this, so... Just trying to make sure it doesn't clip too much through that uh, trolley, I suppose it is, sat there. With this being a workbench anywhere settlement, unfortunately, we can't scrap too much. Well, I can scrap some things, but it's basically only things that are available in USO, so... It's a little limiting. Okay, so that's the uh, main body of it built out, and we'll work on the building proper. So, last time at Merkwater, we did a circular sort of build, which uh, I thoroughly enjoyed doing. I thought an adaption from that would work quite well here. So... We're going to build around the lighthouse here. There we go. This little corner is a bit awkward to build on because things didn't really want to clip through that concrete barrier there. But, uh, we've got a bit of a workaround. Make sure I can uh, snap an internal wall on first. Uh, coming back and doing that later will be a total pain in the neck. So I uh, discovered the hard way when I was doing something else in a minute. What I particularly like about this is the way the lighthouse leans over. I'll obviously eventually do Kingsport and do something a bit different with it, but this is quite cool for its uh, uniqueness. That, the lean it's got on it makes me think of Libertalia a fair bit. You know, the way the uh, main ship at the back there leans sort of away from the rest of the... Uh, Location. I was going to call it a settlement, but that's uh, stretching the definition a little bit. So, uh, I think in future videos I will uh, follow that general theme of Libertalia and build sort of in a leaning back style up the side of it. We'll see how that goes uh, as and when we get to it. For now, this is just the bottom level. So, once you've got these foundation pieces in place, the floor pieces are very cooperative about snapping into place, sort of straight through each other, which is quite helpful. For the most part, it's just a case of position it close as you can to the wall and have it sort of the closest point being in the middle of the uh, floor piece, the foundation piece. But with this particular one, because the cinder blocks you can see on the right there that I can't get rid of, it's a little more awkward and I had to group select it, so using that tall thin post again just because it's that bit longer will stick down below the legs of the uh, foundation there. The unfortunate part about this is uh, having the group select it makes it a lot harder to adjust it subsequently but for the most part it works okay. Let's snap a few more floors in and we run into our first big issue just here. If you look carefully here, you can see that, that floor piece on the other side looks a lot lower than the one on this side. Partly, that's just the uh, lean on the lighthouse and the former bridge causeway thing there being a little bit deceptive, but uh, it is also a little bit too high, so I pulled out some of those adjoining pieces and sunk things a bit further down again and tried to get them closer to the same height. So the idea is to make sure that no matter which foundation piece the floor snaps to, it's the same distance, sort of the same amount below the upper surface of the 
of each foundation piece. Which uh, is probably not the clearest explanation in history, and is even less easy to actually do, to be honest. But uh, we get it as close as we can, and it builds okay, so... That's the main thing. So, we have our little circle, and we'll get some walls on the inside. A lot of these just snap in fine. A couple of them needed a little bit of help. And I did have to make a few adjustments later on, just because the angles, obviously, straight pieces to build the circle doesn't work all that well. So, the angles are a bit... Obviously, they overlap and stick out a bit, so... A little bit of adjustment was required. The one that's going to be on this piece we're standing on now is uh, particularly awkward. But as you'll see in just a moment, some group select solved that particular problem. This little strip of beach is actually flatter than it looks, which is quite convenient. It's got, an, If you get into the right places, it's got a little bit of a curve on it, which is helpful when you're rug glitching. But when you want to just group select like this, we use our nice flat-bottomed oil lamp post that uh, snaps to the floor. That's the word I'm looking for. And group select it into place. Just try and make sure it's nice and even and there's not too much of the uh, stone showing through. A little bit's okay, it just looks like there's holes in the metal, which is fine. So, back over to our start point again. I wanted here a couple of these uh, wall and roof balcony type pieces so that they had somewhere to set up as a kind of guard station. Not that there will actually be any settlers here, but hypothetically if there were, they'd want to be able to watch the bridge as uh, both Poseidon Energy and the FMS Northern Star over to the right, uh, inhabited by raiders. Obviously we're in the south, which is one of the more dangerous regions as well, so they'd want to make sure it's uh, relatively defensible. So at this stage, we're just going to pop round and use different wall and ceiling pieces, wall and roof pieces, just to uh, make it a little bit wider. I don't want it sticking out too far. And we'll just mix and match, just keep those textures varied, and it's just a case of snapping in whatever will fit, wherever it will fit. Which is... Uh, a lot of trial and error, but it allows for a uh, very scrappy finished look. Back over to the start there. There we go. With some of these pieces, I couldn't really connect them very easily. So we've got a little bit of a convenient snap there. That works quite well. I'm going to decide what piece I want to use. There we go. But some of them are rather hard to close off, some of the ends don't want to close up. On the other hand, when I come to move this one in a moment, there you go, you can see I close that internal one but not the external one. For some reason, this is happy to snap straight through the floor though. But uh, it creates a sort of weird angle. Now that I put that ended, it won't go back again. Yeah, it creates a sort of weird angle on the floor there, which is... Yeah, it works. I kind of like it. As I say, it's a bit strange, but... We'll seal up the gap with the floor here, and it'll give them a nice uh, point to watch that beach from. Which, as it turns out, is quite handy, because there was a legendary Milo over there at one stage. In fact, you can see him just there in the corner. And uh, rather than have him clock me and come over and annoy me while I was building, I pulled out a Gauss rifle and dealt with him. So we'll keep it as a kind of balcony there, so we can uh, this, any hypothetical settler could do the same sort of thing. Unfortunately, this has got a flat edge there, so... Uh, particular uh, half wall won't snap in. But we'll uh, rug glitch in a bit. These roofs, for the most part, snap on just fine. They're reasonably forgiving, and they'll either snap to each other or the internal walls, so they can do a lot with it. Where they won't, that flat one will snap straight through the other roofs, and under or over or whatever you happen to be working on, so it's quite convenient for that. Just above our head here, we've got a gap that was uh, slightly annoying, but if we pull this one out again, stick a flat one in, and then put it back, it looks absolutely fine, so it was quite convenient. Now make my mind up. There we go. One. 
see. Just like that. It's not the neatest thing in the world, but you can't really see it from out here anyway, so it's all good. So I'm going to focus on this sort of end of the building, because it's the same principle all the way around, and uh, it gets kind of repetitive, so we'll just do this one corner, and then uh, you can extrapolate. Give you the freedom to do your own thing with it as well, should you so desire. But we'll uh, rug glitch a few of these half walls in, and plug up the gaps a bit. This one's ever so slightly awkward because the vertical post is sort of leaning over ever so slightly, so plugging the gap effect there, you can see the gap at the top there. Plugging that gap effectively is quite awkward. And it's not quite as flat at the top as we'd like. Slide a railing in there. This is the bit that overlooks the beach. Where I end up shooting the mile out from. I'm trying to make sure that the right hand side of it looks like it's part of the uh, piece that's filling up the gap there, a uh, metal half wall. And that's not clipping to through. Try again. That's not clipping through too much on the left there. And there we go. Nice view out. So, judicious use of uh, group select, and we'll. Plug up that last little gap at this end. It's actually a little bit too high, I think, in the end, but it's easily adjusted. Yeah, it's a bit higher than everything else, which is yeah, not the end of the world, but. Yeah, pick up a few rads from the water there. I will extend that bridge in a minute, largely for avoiding that particular issue with the rads. It actually doesn't cause this character too much problem, but... Potentially any settlers might have an issue with it. So, this particular staircase, or any staircase, won't actually snap to the edge of these um, corner pieces, but they will group select in just fine. I did end up changing this around, so my initial idea was to put it on a bit of an angle so it didn't completely block off access to the lighthouse, so I'll probably want to do something with that in time anyway. But, once it's at an angle, getting in and out is a bit awkward, and it doesn't really look very good either, so i changed things up in a moment. I had thought about using a, a plywood board to, or possibly a plank to make it look like it was attached to that rather than uh, anything else, the main body of the corner piece, but you can just about see me hitting my head on the ceilings and going in and out there. But that will not do. Not that the settler pathing is really an issue here, given that I can't have any anyway, but uh, if I can't get in and out, that is a problem. So, we use the same piece but the other way around. There's two versions of this, with a different wall sealed off on each one. And we'll uh, put the staircase pointing into the lighthouse, which actually looks like it's sort of uh, less convenient than it was on the other side. But for some reason it doesn't cause any problems, and as long as you don't rush through at full speed, you won't bash your head on the lintel of the lighthouse. And there we are. So just inside here, where I've got that uh, wall and roof piece at a strange angle, there's actually a corner that sort of sticks out, isn't very well sealed up, just doesn't look very good. So we're going to seal that off here, be this one here. See the walls don't meet there, and there's just a post randomly sat there in the middle as well. I think the rug is turning red here because of the floor more than anything else, I think. Just because we've got so many different textures crammed into the same space. We'll uh, tweak it ever so slightly. And it'll cooperate. When I make my mind up. There we go. Jobs are good. So the idea behind doing this build, rather than uh, finishing off Murkwater on this occasion, was that uh, when I actually recorded it, I was running low on time. I was hoping I'd be able to do this 
and come up with something coherent a little bit faster than what I need to do at Merkwater because I haven't really got any major builds to do, just sort of more of what I've already done and then the finished tour. So that's going to take a lot of time for a relatively small video. So I wanted to move on to doing this one. I'm just using the corner there because I'm having some issues with the getting into the space. Yeah. So Merkwater will be coming. But uh, the idea, as I say, was to do something a bit quicker with the hope of getting it done and out on time. But for varying reasons that didn't happen. So we'll probably go into in another video during the week. So, just a couple of little bits and pieces, and then that's basically the main build done. Oh, for this level anyway. Not actually going to decorate this time, because I haven't quite figured out where I'm going with it, and I will likely have to pull bits off anyway before I uh, make any further progress. But, this little section, on this corner, I couldn't get a roof in no matter how hard I tried. So I decided to pull one section of the floor out and put a door or rather two doors facing each other. So that usual door piece that's opposite the one we're adjusting now went in just fine, but it meant that I couldn't put one on the other piece here because of uh, slight collision issues. So this is actually an internal door added by USO. It uh, doesn't snap and it does raw glitch, as you can see. And it'll give us the option to put another door on this side. Also in USO we've got some doors that don't snap either, so it makes it a lot easier just to glitch those into place, which is what I ended up using on both sides, because I wanted the doors to open into the building rather than out of it, as uh, if it opened outwards you just wouldn't be able to get between the two doorways. So, and Unfortunately none of the vanilla ones wanted to cooperate on that. I actually replaced that floor piece uh, later on as well with a warehouse one but it's a relatively minor adjustment that you'll see in just a moment so we're going to finish off the bridge here obviously it needs to descend by quite a long way and using the traditional pieces you can't really put a staircase on them not and have it look very good anyway so we can use this flat one that doesn't have any supports on it just line up the stairs here A little bit of group select. And that brings us much closer to the right level. And then we'll just use a couple of the small ones to finish off at the other end. There we go. So there's one. And it's much the same principle as I'm very fond of using. Just group select the thing in on, onto the end. And then another one just in front of it because it doesn't quite meet the floor. And we barely even have to get our feet wet when we're done. So there we go, that's the last one. Just try and make sure that lower step is just below the surface of the concrete there, just for the sake of neatness, as we don't really need it. And there we go. There'll be a paddling required. So, that last section just needs some support now, so we're going to... Uh, Adapt another technique I've been using at Merkwater and just use one of these flat topped bridges because they're very, very convenient for that. However, there is no way I'm going to be able to group select that from far enough away to get it even remotely centralised underneath the existing bridge piece. So we'll grab a length of conduit and use that to extend our group select range. Reach, however you want to look at it. Just like that. Move it into place in the middle. And there we go, we have a reach far enough now. A little bit of filling to get that into place. And there we go, neat as you like. So, the tour. Really like how this place looks in there. Particularly in the good weather as well. Much would be a lot less fun for a place to live in the storms, but you know. So, over the bridge. I don't think I'll put railings on this, but we'll see how I feel. I do quite like it's uh, rickety, might just fall off feel about it. 
That red post in the back there, by the way, is actually the uh, workbench. Yeah, uh, workbench anywhere, sorry, has been updated recently. And uh, we've now got a few different options for skins for the workbench. So that takes up a lot less room than the traditional one does, which is quite cool. So that's a little lookout post over the bridge there. Through our funny angled corner to our other one that's looking out on the beach. Now we shall progress towards our couple of little doorways, which is our solution to a slightly awkward problem. There we go. Gives you a nice view out over the ocean anyway. And more of the same in general in here as well. So somewhere along here, I think I'll probably find somewhere to put stairs up and then sort of build up and back a little along the uh, incline of the lighthouse, which is more around the other side, I think, than this side, but it should create quite a cool little look. And the build area actually reaches out in that direction almost as far as those shacks, which is quite a long way, really. One of the cool things about this particular mod. So, that's that for now. So Murkwater will be coming up probably on Friday, and a couple of other bits and pieces through the week as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching as always. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, I'm sure you know what to do by now. Social media links are down in the description, and I will be speaking to you all very, very soon. Thank you very much.